Well, I think it's fair to say this is not an unboxing and first impressions review. This is the Wagner W100 spray gun that I bought just over a year ago. This video is going to be talking about the year I've spent with it, what I think it can and can't spray, and most importantly at the end, would I recommend it to anyone who may be watching this video. Okay, let's have a look at it and see what it can do. Hello again and welcome back to my channel. Now, if you've clicked on this video, you may well be in the position that I was 12 months ago in regards to you are thinking about entering the world of spraying. You might have some projects coming up over the summer and you're not particularly wanting to buy the cheapest thing that's on the market, but you don't want to spend a fortune either. And that's probably where this comes in, which is the Wagner W100. All right, and there's a link in the description to this. Now, I think it's really important for me to point out at this stage that I am a complete and utter novice sprayer. Prior to actually buying this, I had never even picked up a spray gun before, never mind used one. So if you've clicked on this video thinking you're gonna find out the fine arts of spraying, then really this isn't gonna be the video for you at all. If, like me, you're a complete and utter novice, then it might be worth you carrying on having a look to find out what this is all about. So let's just quickly deal with the actual gun itself before we move on to what it can and can't do. What do you get with it? Well, you get a box, okay, with the manual inside and you get the spray gun, which has an 800 milliliter pot and it has an adjustable plus and minus for the actual spray power of the spray and it also has an adjustable nozzle for the angle on the front so you can spray horizontally vertically or in a circular motion for trying to get up into the corners what else do you get you actually get a stirring device that has a spike on it an actual mix ratio calculator thing which i lost about three months ago but it's not the end of the world for the nozzle cleaning i just use an old toothbrush i think it's an old one anyway and um, I just have a little stirrer as well, a little polypropylene thing. So in terms of the gun itself, it's not overly complicated at all. It comes in two pieces that just clicks together and the pot just screws into place, which if I can do it with one hand, you will have no difficulty using two. Now the actual review itself is gonna be broken down into certain subsections, which is gonna start with a question that's either been asked of me when people have spotted, uh, viewers and subscribers have spotted me using it in a project, or the kind of questions I was asking when I was starting out looking for a sprayer just over a year ago. So we're gonna look at the different types of liquids that I've used to actually uh, for spraying and onto different surfaces, etc. So let's get started with the questions and then I will try my best to give you a straightforward answer. Well, can it spray fence panel paint? Well, that was the first question and probably the primary question I was asking when I was looking for a spray gun because I knew I had some projects coming up. I had a cold storage box to build. I had a shed to build. Links in the description to all of those projects. And I had a, pardon the pun, shed load of fence panels and feather boards to paint as well. And if I didn't know any better, I'd say actually this, this spray gun that's its primary purpose because it has absolutely no difficulties whatsoever in spraying fence panels. And I use this stuff, Ron Seal One Coat. It takes more than one coat, by the way, and uh, regular subscribers will know that. All right, and it's actually quite viscous. It's quite thick, this stuff. And I've not thinned it down or anything, straight into the tub and no problems whatsoever, okay? I have literally, uh, well, I've got, I've sprayed loads of fence panels i have sprayed hundreds and hundreds of feather boards with this and my entire shed and also my cold storage box as well and no issues whatsoever so if that's your primary purpose then this gun absolutely Can it spray a wood treatment solution? Well, yeah, again, no problem at all with that. I bought myself some of this, this Roxil wood protection liquid because when I was building the shed, the floor was an OSB board and I wanted to give it some kind of treatment before I actually laid it down. And so I was using the Roxil 
and the spray gun again absolutely perfect for it no problems whatsoever the only way i cleaned it after was just to put a little bit of warm water into the tub and i put a tiny little bit just a tiny amount of like detox not the soapy stuff uh, and that just sprayed it through and then i sprayed it through just with water itself no issues whatsoever no sticking problems or no issues with the nozzle so wood treatment stuff again no problem at all and this the w100 absolutely ideal for it now i don't actually know how to quite phrase this question properly the spray width what i actually mean by that and somebody asked me is when you fire the spray gun and it sprays out what's the how far apart is that distance because i think some people are concerned about overspray particularly if they're spraying fence panels and going over into next door or something so what is the spray width now it's a difficult one to measure because obviously i can't start firing the thing and then you know, so what i've actually done is i'll just show you the demonstration now is i took a an osb board and i took some of my tudor black oak fence panel paint and you can just see me spraying it now so you can see the actual distance as it's going along and that's just to give you an idea of the actual spray the jet width if you like or the power of which it's actually coming out with so you can see for yourselves and make a judgment call yourselves on whether that's like a too wide spray width or if that's actually ideal for your purposes obviously if you move the gun closer towards what you're spraying that will reduce the spray width but you've got to be careful there that you don't kind of over spray onto the material you're spraying on which might cause some kind of runs so just to throw that one in because i have been asked that on more than one occasion and i was a little bit sort of um not sure how to answer it so i thought a demonstration would be the best way Okay, now we're getting into the world of paints and this question, can it spray acrylic primer undercoat? Now, on the actual box it comes in, it says it's suitable for paints that have, I'm just going to show you, it's in the middle there, that little red logo, and it's called the Perfect Spray logo. Now, I have to be perfectly honest with you, I've never seen that logo on a tin of paint before. Maybe never because I've never been looking for it, but, and I'm about to invalidate my own warranty here, all the paints that I am going to demonstrate now don't have the Perfect Spray logo because I owned all these paints previously and I needed to use them because I didn't want to go out and buy a load more paint. So the first one I used is Leyland Acrylic Primer Undercoat. I made a load of skirting boards for the house uh, out of MDF and I wanted to prime them first before applying a top coat. So I'm about to show you a demonstration that I've put, up, put together outside because I never actually filmed that project using the acrylic primer on the coat. So now you can see I just pour it into an actual jug and then I'm mixing it up. Now it says in the manual a 5 to 10% mix ratio of water to paint. Now I wasn't being completely mathematical with this. I was just going kind of by eye and as I got to know it a little bit better, I uh, kind of got um, used to realising what actual consistency it needed to be. And then I just applied it over a couple of coats. Now, you've got to be kind of careful not to leave it too long between coats because you don't want the nozzle getting blocked up and you don't want the paint starting to dry in the actual mechanisms itself. I think a good tip, actually, if you're going to be going down this route is um, actually to have a couple of different projects. So if you're priming maybe walls or you're priming some wood materials or something is have more than one and actually go between them um, so you can let one dry while you're working on the other one once you've finished with that one then the other one might be touch dry or maybe dry to get its second coat and then you can carry on with that so you can leave it for a little while you know you can leave it for half an hour or so but you don't want to be leaving it um, too long all right because then you don't want to start getting issues with the nozzle I had absolutely, oops, excuse me, I had absolutely no problems at all and I was really happy with the finish that it gave. Now I can give you a bit of a picture here, it's not a great close up. That um, experiment I've just showed you outside, I made absolutely no preparation on the MDF. It was actually a jig for me, old table saw, so I just found that piece. So it wasn't washed down with white spirit, it wasn't sort of everything you're meant to do i didn't do i just wanted to demonstrate to you that you can spray it onto mdf and i was really happy with the primer with the finish itself so can you use it 
Absolutely. All right. Just make sure you get your little mix ratios right and there's no problems at all. I've done it loads of times and had no issues whatsoever. Okay, next question. Can it spray emulsion? Well, yes, it can. I've not, again, I've had no problems whatsoever. I have used and I've got another experiment set up for you just to demonstrate. Um, in this one, I'm using Dulux Feature Wall. Now, this stuff, if you've ever used it, is really thick. It's, I think viscous is the right word. All right. So again, I'm just a little quick demonstration for you there. I found an old sacrificial board that I was using for me uh, track saw and I primed it on one side with the acrylic primer undercoat. And as you can see now, I'm spraying the Enchanted Eden feature wall from Dulux onto it. And again, no problems at all. OK, I had to kind of thin it down again a little bit more than I did with the undercoat. And I have to say, just even on this demonstration, the MDF wasn't primed or, you know, wasn't wiped down or anything. I'm just doing it again for the purposes of a demonstration. And I was really happy with the results. I've used this inside in the house. Again, really happy with the finish. I found it much, much, certainly a hell of a lot better than a paintbrush and better than a roller. So um, the Dulux, it hasn't got that little red logo on it, the Perfect Spray logo, but I had no problems at all and I've used it a few times, no issues, and I've gone on to use the, sp uh, the spray gun with other things after that, so it's not affected the motor or anything. I'm happy to say it. it's not what the manufacturers are saying, so, you know, you pay your money, you take your chance, but happy with the finish, happy that it can use it fine, no problems. Next question. Can it spray satin wood paint? Now, regular viewers and subscribers will know why I'm smiling at this because when I was decorating last year, I made it my life's mission to rid the world of gloss paint. I can't stand the stuff, all right? I can't stand the white paint that goes yellowing. I can't stand the finish either. So once I stripped everything down and also with making my own skirting boards, I decided to find a different finish and I came up my favorite one was Johnston's One Coat Quick Dry Satin Wood. Now, can you use it on the spray gun with this? Well, again, a little demonstration there, that off cut of MDF from my old jig is now being sprayed with some coats of satin wood. I had to mix it down slightly, okay, just with a little bit of water and had no issues again whatsoever with spraying the satin wood with the spray gun and I have to be, the pictures won't do it justice. I can show you a little picture, but it's not gonna do it justice. The results I was extremely happy with, particularly on the skirting boards in the house. Really, you know, it's my own house and it wasn't decorators coming in or anything. It was me doing everything on my own. And I have to say, I was really happy with the finish and I would thoroughly recommend it if you were planning on doing the same. So can it spray satin wood? Yes, it absolutely can. And does it give a nice finish? For me and my pathetic spraying techniques, it gave a lovely finish. So I'm really happy with that. Can it spray metal paints? Because on the box it says suitable for wood and metal paints. Now, to be honest, it's something I've never done and never had the need to do. And I've never really seen, I've looked at some other YouTube uh, videos on this. The reason why I bought this was actually because of James's Man Cave review from a year or two ago. And I'll leave a link in the description for that. Uh, but most of the actual demonstrations I've seen, it doesn't show people demonstrating it with metal paints. And it's something I've never done before. So for the purposes of this video, because I want it to be a thorough review, I went out and bought some Hammerite Direct to Rust Red Metal Paint. And I've also already got some thinners. And then I was looking around for something to paint because I haven't really got anything metal to paint. But I thought, I was looking at it before, my trusty kettlebell, which you see in lots of projects, which secures things down for me. Uh, which is getting a little bit rusty. So I thought, right, okay, we're gonna take this outside now and give it a go and see how we get on. So if it works, I'll give it the thumbs up at the end. If I'm not happy with it, I'll give it the thumbs down, but everyone will say, God, it's because your spraying technique was absolutely awful and not because of the actual spray gun itself. <laughs> but let's go out and have a look and see how we get on.
Well, the spray gun's fine. My spraying leaves a lot to be desired. <laughs> Which brings us to the conclusion, would I recommend it? Now, if you've managed to make it to the end of this video, then I'm pretty sure you'll know what my answer is going to be because I've tried in this review to demonstrate as many different types of materials as possible. So we've looked at fence panel paint, we've looked at wood treatment solution, we've looked at acrylic primer undercoat without the red thingy. We've looked at emulsion, we've looked at satin wood, we've looked at metal paint, all right? And what a fantastic piece of kit in this mid-price section. Okay, and I've left, again, I said I've left a link in the description. Now, I paid $49.99 for this 12 months ago. Now, there is one slight catch to this, which is a bit of a problem at the moment. Now, before you all go clicking on the link for this, in the description which is to Amazon and I have to say as an Amazon associate I gain a few pennies from each sale so uh, that really does help the channel if you decide to go down those routes but I would although I'm thoroughly recommending this product I think it's one of the best value for money tools I've actually ever bought I would hold off from buying it now all right the reason being and you think you know where I'm going to be going with this the COVID situation over the last four, four or five months or however long it's been has had a bad knock-on effect with the manufacturing industry and I've no doubt that most of the actual um, factories closed down whilst making these. And I'd say the price of the Wagner W100, if you're currently looking, has probably doubled. All right, I was looking the other day on Amazon and it was around and about 90 to 100 pounds. All right. It's still a great tool, all right? If you're absolutely desperate for it, then, and you're prepared to pay that price, then fair dues. But I would actually hold off. It might even only be for a few weeks, all right? This video's going out in June. Hopefully in the next few weeks or the next couple of months, uh, with the factories reopening, then manufacturing um, increasing and more product out there so you might start to see those prices in and around the 50 pound mark again and at that price what an absolute bargain that is so i hope you've enjoyed this review everyone all right i've tried to be as thorough as possible uh, about the the wagner w100 i think it's brilliant i've used it in loads of different projects with loads of different materials and it has not skipped the beat whatsoever okay hope you enjoyed this video guys as i always say take care and look after yourselves and i'll see you soon thanks very much